Hello, welcome back Greenfooters. It's episode 23 of the Joy of Code. Um, good that you're still with us. If you've made it this far and actually watched all the episodes before, you're doing really well. Um, we are over many of the basics and we can soon make things um, much more interesting. Today I will still continue fiddling a bit with this balls, um, bouncy colored balls projects. There, there are still a few things that we can do um, that have quite nice effects and that we can learn something from. So let's jump right into it. Here we have the um, project as we left it last time. So we have uh, colored balls flying around uh, different sizes, different colors, and every time I click I get a new one um, and my world will slowly get more and more crowded. What I actually want to do now is so that it doesn't always only get fuller but that it also actually gets emptier after a while again. I want these balls to slowly fade away and disappear. So I will um, change the alpha value and we've said before here in the color, um, here we generate the random color. There is the color specified by these th three values RGB standing for red, green, blue. Um, those together make up the color and then there's the alpha value which sets the transparency. For example here we see this ball here is fairly transparent that has a fairly high alpha value um, whereas this one here um, has a, uh, a low alpha value that is more solid. So the alpha value of um, that is the transparency of the color we can change. So in the act method um, we want to here essence, um, essentially um, add some code that changes the transparency. Um, so we say here, we I just make change transparency. Often it is good to just start by saying what you want to do and just, you know, if you wish you had a method that does something, just write it as if you had that method. Write change transparency because I want the transparency to change. And of course we don't have that method. So the next step then is to make yourself a method that actually does it. So you say void change transparency and there's my method. So I first can get my background image. I can say get get image. That gives me my own image. That is, I'm here, notice in the ball class, so that is my own circle image. I store it in a local variable. The image is of course of type greenfoot image, when I call it img, and that's where I store my image. So now I've got my image. Then I go to the image and I look, there is a set transparency method. Well, but I don't know what to set it to. So um, it tells us a value from 0 to 255. 0 is completely transparent, that is invisible. 255 is completely opaque, so that is, you know, solid. So essentially we want to decrease the alpha value towards 0. Um, but if I want to decrease it from what it is now, I first have to know what it is now. So what I'm doing is um, I set transparency and here the question is, you know, what should I set it to? What I do actually is I get my transparency um, and then I subtract a bit of it, let's say oh, 1, minus 1. So this should um, decrease the transparency. The problem with this is the idea is good, the problem is that it goes too far because once I get down, down to 0, I'm not stopping. So here um, you know, it will get negative and then I'm getting a problem. So I need to check whether I actually need to stop and for that I better copy that out. So I just do a cut of this and I put that into local variable. I say int trans... Oh, I can, let's just call it alpha. Alpha is the sort of more professional name for the transparency. So I do my image get transparency. That's my current alpha value. And then I want to say here, I want to set it to alpha minus 1. But now I have to be um, careful because if the alpha value is already at 0, then I want to stop. So 
I say here, put an if statement in here, if alpha is still greater than zero, then I want to do this. And now we're actually seeing an extended form of the if statement. Um, the if statement that we've seen before was always of this form, the keyword if, a condition, and a body. Now the if statement actually has an extended form. It can also have an else clause. So I can have an if statement that has an, a condition and a body, then the keyword else and a second body. Um, in fact, I can't believe that we got this far into programming, you know, 20 episodes in building two projects and we haven't even seen a full if statement yet before. It's actually quite surprising because that is quite a common statement. You will see that regularly from now on. Uh, you can almost guess what it does. So essentially, we already know that if this condition is true, then that um, code between the brackets is executed. And now else means if it was not true in the other case, then we execute the code in, uh, the, in the else block. And then if I had code down here below, that gets executed in any case again. So what do I want to do in the else case? If the alpha value was already zero, then I just want to remove the ball from the world. The method to remove an object from the world is in the world class, so I need to first do a get world call, and then um, I, oops, I was just wondering whether there were no, why there were no completions available. I just hit control space to get the code completion. The reason was because I have misspelled this. So now I should get the code completion. So um, there is a remove object method here. So I can remove an object from the world. And if I want to remove myself, I can write this. This is a special keyword in Java that refers to the current object that is executing right now. So essentially here, this ball says, if the alpha value is greater than zero, then decrease it a bit. And otherwise, if it was already zero, get the world and remove myself from the world. So there, the ball essentially takes itself out of the world, which means watching it, it will disappear. That looks fine. Let's write a comment over it. Um, make the ball more transparent if it is completely transparent. Um, remove it. Okay. Let's try that out. Oops, my mouse has a bit of trouble here. Something f with my Bluetooth mouse here isn't working so well. Okay, I got that and I have a an error. So what is going on here? Change transparency. So if you get a compiler error, always read the message down here. It says cannot find symbol method change transparency. Maybe you meant, okay, I can see here the spelling is wrong. There it says trans change transparency and here there's a T in it. So I have misspelled it over here. Let me compile again. Yes, this is fine now. So here we go and we run it. And let's try that out. I put um, some circles in here. And if you now watch the circles, um, pick one. Let's look at those really bright greenish one here. If we follow this around, bouncing around there, it slowly fades away. Okay, so here we can now put circles in and they float around and slowly fade away. One thing to take away from now, remember the shape of the full if statement with an if and an else clause. That will be important later on. Okay, that's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.